have three children, Jack, Emma, and Marjorie. PBS Kids has been such a big part of our lives. We watch Daniel Tiger every day. Marjorie loves that episode when Prince Wednesday's cousin, Chrissy, is visiting and Daniel notices Chrissy wears these leg braces. She has braces just like me. Getting the leg braces was difficult for Marjorie. Seeing Chrissy wear them just totally changed her mindset about it. I feel like she was made just for me. PBS Kids is such a value to our family. From right here you can go anywhere and see amazing things. And that's because you and I are friends. And right here you can be just the very best that you can be. So take a look around. Let's learn and play and see. in the clubhouse where everyone has a view of all the wonderful things to do. Hey Blueberry, what are you doing? Just finishing up my favorite dish. Blueberry a la mode. Wow, that sounds great. Are you almost finished? One moment. Blueberry, I need your help with something really important. <gasps> Do you know what today is? Oh, hmm. Oh, oh, it's, oh, it's, it's meatloaf night in the mess hall. No. Oh. Oh, I know, it's National Pancake Day. No, that's not it. Oh, hmm. Well, I give up, Max. What's so special about today? Today's my birthday, Blueberry. What? Your birthday? You get to celebrate your birthday at camp? Every year. I love spending my birthday at the lake. This is great news. That means decorations. Yeah. And balloons. Yeah. And snacks. Those are the best part. Do you think we have enough time to get all that dumb blueberry? Sure we do, Max. All we've got to do is get our ducks in a row. Ducks? just who to ask for help. <gasps> Our friends at Zigzag Arts and Crafts. Hi, Blueberry. Hi, Max. Happy birthday, Max. Happy <laughs> birthday. <laughs> I'm Jeannie. I'm Claire. And we're at Zigzag in Little Rock. We are an art studio where kids get to come and make messes number one and art number two. Um, and today we're gonna help you guys make some decorations for the clubhouse for the birthday party. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're gonna make some blue buntings. What's a bunting? Um, it's like a banner with a banner? different shapes on it. With triangle flags. And we're gonna make it blue because blueberry. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use some glue and we're going to make wavy lines because the lake. So we're going to make lake lines for our buntings. Are you ready? You going to make some wavy lines with me? Okay. So we are going to make wavy lines and it's white glue on white paper so you can't see it very well. But once we paint it, these invisible lines will appear. For our next step, we've let the glue dry completely and the best thing to do is to maybe leave it overnight or at least like four hours. Okay and now we're gonna paint but we're not gonna paint the whole thing all at once. We're gonna paint a little section and then we're gonna take a paper towel and wipe off the lines to see if our lines appear. Okay you ready? Okay let's do a section. Let's see if it works. 
The reason you do it one section at a time is because you don't want the glue to dry on top of the wavy line. And then, yay, they appear. And they look like waves in the lake. Awesome. In addition to the bunting, we're gonna have sunshines for the clubhouse. And Claire is working on the beginning of the sunshine. So we're using cardboard to make our sunshines and Claire's using yellow. Um, which, like we were talking about, is a warm color. And the warm color is going to look really good with the bunting, which is a cool color. So once she is done painting, we are going to cut out a circle for the center of the sun. And then we're going to cut strips for the rays of the sun. Okay, so now we are going to assemble our sunshines and we are going to use glue guns. These are cool glue guns and you can use any kind of glue. You can use Elmer's glue, tacky glue is great. These are just super fast. We have them all glued and they're finished. Hey, hey son. Well, our blue wavy paper is dry. So I'm going to give you half, Claire, and we are going to cut it into triangles for our bunting flags. So the next step is we're going to punch holes, two holes in the top of each triangle. Once our triangles have holes in the top, we can take some string and string them together. Ta-da! <laughs> Have a great birthday, Max. Have a great birthday, Max. We hope you have a wonderful party and you enjoy your decorations. Hello, Robin Reparte here. I am a uh, world-renowned comedian, and I have a joke for you. You ready? How do Romans make graphs? With their sharpest scissors. Because Caesar is from Rome, you get it? You understand? Caesars? Ah, oh, it's a tough crowd. Oh. oh no, don't go. Oh no, don't go, I got more jokes. Oh, no. Decorations are done! Max, I've never been to a birthday party at the lake before. What made you think of that? I don't know. I think the lake may be my favorite part about coming to camp. I love to go canoeing before it gets too hot, and I love the way the sun shines off the bright blue water. Oh. And most of all, I just love to float on my back and look at the clouds. Well. That's just what I was thinking. No party is any kind of party without f balloons. What do balloons have to do with the lake? Well, I guess how you like to float across the water, balloons like to float across the air. Plus, they're so much fun to blow up. don't seem very floaty. <laughs> oh no! If we can't get our balloons to float, this party will be a bust for sure! I think I know who can help us with high-flying balloons. Our good friends at Little Rock's Museum of Discovery. Go ahead, Max. Take a look. Blueberry, I heard you were having trouble making your balloons float. That's where helium comes in. So helium is way lighter than air, which is what makes them float right up to the top. But we're gonna talk about that and some other gases today. 
So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this helium balloon and we're gonna put it inside of some liquid nitrogen. Now this liquid nitrogen is so cold, it's negative 321 degrees Fahrenheit. And so when we put our balloon inside, that liquid nitrogen is cooling the helium so, so cold that it becomes a liquid. But when we take it out, it transforms back into a gas and floats. So Blueberry, now that we've learned just a little bit about helium, which is number two on the periodic table, I want to talk to you a little bit about hydrogen, another form of gas. So I have this beach ball filled up with just a little bit of hydrogen, all right? And hydrogen, again, is just a little bit lighter than helium. So we're going to see what would happen if we made hydrogen our gas of choice for balloons. I'm gonna fill this up. Hydrogen is much lighter than helium, so it would float, but the issue is, is hydrogen happens to be extraordinarily flammable. And we're gonna put that to the test. And three, two, one, whoo! See, that's why we don't use hydrogen in our balloons. So Blueberry, now that we've learned about helium and hydrogen, I wanna teach you about one other gas before we go. So we have a gas all around us called nitrogen. It makes up about 80% of the air that we breathe. Inside of this picture right here, I have something called liquid nitrogen, which is a liquid form of the gas nitrogen. Inside of here, I have a little bit of hot water. I'm gonna pour that out. And we're gonna mix the two and just see what happens. But if you guys have any more questions about gases or anything at all, you guys come see us at the Museum of Discovery here in Little Rock. And let's see what we can get. Three, two, one. Well, Blueberry and Max, I hope you had a great time learning about all the different gases today, and I hope you guys have a great birthday. Robin Reporter here, and I have a joke for you. I once saw a lion riding in a hot air balloon. It was quite an uproar. You get an uproar like a lion, like a <laughs> It's good, right? You're laughing. Oh no, don't go again. No, 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 no. I got, I've got so many good jokes. Idea that some gases can be lighter than other gases. With all these great decorations, your party is sure to be a gas. <laughs> the lids are done. What was that? I don't know, Max. You don't think that was thunder, do you? No, Max. I think that was my tummy. All this decorating has made me hungry. I think it's time we work on some snacks. And I know just who to call for great party snacks. My friends at Appleseed's Teaching Farm in Fayetteville. Come on. Hey, Blueberry. You definitely came to the right place. Making tasty snacks is what we do best here at Apple Seeds. We grow tons of fruits and veggies so that kids just like you can learn how to make healthy and delicious treats. I think fruit kebabs would be a good thing to make for your party. Let's go take a look in our garden and see what we can find. Come on. Look, Farmer Ellen. Let's see what she's up to. How do you do, Lizzie? What's up? I've been harvesting bloobs all morning. Harvest? What does that mean? Harvest means to pick the part of the plant that you're gonna eat. Here, you try it. Okay. Good job. Not only are blueberries delicious, but they're amazing for your brain. Really? Can I use some of them for my snack? Only if you let me have some. Of course. Well, here you go. Hey, Lizzie, I'm just balling some melons. Ooh, that looks fun. I'm about to make some fruit kebabs for Blueberry's birthday party. You want to help me? I would love to. We could add the melon. Ooh, that would be really good. I'll get the fruit ready while you read the recipe. Thank you. So the first thing that you always want to do when you're cooking is read the recipe. Here's the recipe for our fruit kebabs. 
The first thing you do when you read a recipe is look at the ingredients. The ingredients list will tell us what we need to make the recipe and how much of each item we need. So for this recipe, we need one cup of blueberries, one large apple, one cup of strawberries, one cup of melon, and some skewers. So these are the fruits that we're gonna use today, but you can use any fruit you'd like for your kebabs. So let's follow our instructions. Our next step is to make our kebabs. So the way that you do this is you wanna put your piece of fruit down on the cutting board, and then take your toothpick and just poke it through. And then you wanna take your fingers and gently pull it down. And be very careful with this step not to poke your fingers. Yeah, these are sharp. Do you wanna try? Yeah. These look really good. So now we'll just continue building them until all the fruit is gone. Oh wait, I have an awesome dip recipe that would go so great with these. How? We don't have any more ingredients. Kitchen magic. All you have to do is snap your fingers and say mise en place. Ready? Okay. Mise en place. Whoa! It worked! Let's get going. All right, I'll add one cup of yogurt. Lizzie, will you measure out two teaspoons of honey? Sure. Oh, Lizzie, not that one, that's the tablespoon. How do you tell the difference? The tablespoon is the bigger one. The abbreviation is T-B-S-P. And the smaller one is the teaspoon. The abbreviation is T-S-P. What helps me remember is the tablespoon's abbreviation has a B in it, B for bigger. And the teaspoon is the one that we need for the honey. Oh, that makes sense. Why don't you do the honey while I do the cinnamon? Awesome. How much do we need? One quarter teaspoon. Oh, I know which one that is now. And the last ingredient, a little pinch of salt. Make some plates. Who's the third plate for? Oh, Farmer Ellen gave me her blueberries, and I told her that I would bring her part of our snack. Oh, that's so nice. I love sharing. Me too. Right, let's try it. Farmer Ellen, we made you a plate. Here you go. Ooh, this looks good. Ooh. This is gonna give me energy to keep farming. A farmer job never done. See you later. Bye. Bye. Well, it seems like Farmer Ellen enjoyed her snack. Blueberry, I hope you learned how to make it and that all your friends like it. See you next time. Oh, hello again. Rap and repartee. I have one last joke for you, okay? You ready for it? It's a good one. This one's probably going to bring the house down. Okay, here we go. Here we go. So, uh, what is a scarecrow's favorite fruit? You give up? Okay, I tell you. A strawberry. Oh, you get it, straw? Like a scarecrow strawberry? Strawberry is funny, right? It's funny, it's very funny. Oh, you're leaving again. Oh, okay, well, goodbye. These snacks look great. I think I could eat them all myself. No, we, we can't do that, Max. We have to be sure we have enough snacks for everyone coming to the party. Who all is coming? Let's see. There's you and I. Uh-huh. Plus all the girls from the girls' bunk. <gasps> That's six more! Plus the six boys from the boys' bunk. Oh, oh, we can't forget about Camp Counselor Carol. Wow. How many is that? Well, that's two plus six. Plus six, plus one. That's 15! Max, do we have enough snacks? We have three plates. And five snacks on each plate. So, we just multiply the plates. By the snacks! That's 15! <gasps> That's just enough for the party. Oh, thank goodness. Snacks are finished. That's not my stomach this time, I promise. That was thunder. 
You don't think it's gonna storm at the lake, do you? You girls okay? Yeah, we're safe in the clubhouse. Is it storming? You bet, and it's a doozy. Is it storming at the lake? We're having my birthday party there this afternoon. I'm afraid it's storming all over Camp Max. We'll have to have your party at another time. But today is my birthday. Are you sure, Camp Counselor Carol? I'm afraid so. No leaving the clubhouse for now. I'm really sorry about your party at the lake, Max. But we can still have your party here at the clubhouse. I wanted to have my party at the lake. <sighs> we just worked so hard. And now, I feel so helpless. Why did it have to storm today of all days? We can't stop the storm, Max. I know. But why did it have to ruin my party? <sighs> I'm gonna sit on the porch and watch the rain. You should just make a new dish. new blueberry how are you today not good oh why is that well today's my friend max's birthday and we spent all day planning a party for her at the lake but now it's raining <gasps> oh no and it rained poor max's birthday party out yeah oh hmm. <gasps> this reminds me of one of my favorite books granny I don't have time for a story right now. We have to save Max's party. Remember, Blueberry, there ain't a problem in this world that can't be solved by a good story. Now, let's read Dragons Love Tacos by Adam Rubin. Hey, kid, did you know dragons love tacos? They love beef tacos and chicken tacos. They love really big, gigantic tacos and tiny little baby tacos as well. Why do dragons love tacos? Maybe it's the smell of the sizzling pan. Maybe it's the crunch of the crispy tortillas. Maybe it's a secret. But wait, as much as dragons love tacos, they hate spicy salsa even more. They hate spicy green salsa and spicy red salsa. They hate spicy chunky salsa and spicy smooth salsa. If the salsa is spicy at all, dragons can't stand it. Why do dragons hate spicy salsa? Well, just one drop of hot sauce makes a dragon's ears smoke. Just one single speck of hot pepper makes a dragon snort sparks. Spicy salsa gives dragons the tummy troubles. And when dragons get the tummy troubles, oh boy. Hey dragon, are you excited for the big taco party? Just remember, dragons hate spicy salsa. Before you host your taco party with dragons, get rid of all the spicy salsa. In fact, bury the spicy salsa in the backyard so the dragons can't find it. These dragons love your taco party. They love the music, they love the decorations, they especially love the tacos. Congratulations! It's a good thing you got rid of all that spice. Wait a second, what are those little green things in the salsa? You didn't read the fine print! <gasps> dragons, listen to me. Do not eat those tacos. Too Why would dragons help you rebuild your house? Maybe they're good Samaritans. Maybe they feel bad for wrecking it. 
Maybe they're just in it for the taco breaks. After all, dragons love tacos. The end. Hi, I'm Cloudy. And when I start feeling nervous or scared, I try and remember that it won't last forever. Kinda like a storm. It comes and goes just like thoughts and feelings. You don't have to let a storm decide how you're gonna spend your day and your fears soon will float by like clouds in the sky. Now it's my time to float away. Bye! Hey everybody. What are you doing out of the box? Well, the storm is let up, so we thought we'd come to your birthday party. There's no time now. Plus, it could start raining again any second. <sighs> no birthday party today. That's not what we heard. Change of weather, a change of plan. 